In our last lecture, we examined using the seven rules for sketching the frequency response plot. We looked at four examples. And in this lecture, we'll look at four more examples. Each of these examples illustrates some important idea of applying the rules. Now let's look at an example where there is a zero at the origin. The transfer function for this example is g of s equals 216s over s plus 3 times s plus 36. This has one zero at the origin and no poles at the origin. So m is equal to plus 1. It has a pole at minus 3 and a pole at minus 36. For step 2, we'll remove the 0 that is at s equals 0 to make our new transfer function h of s. And then we'll find h sub 0. And it will be equal to 2. We plot this point at 1 radian per second. We're now ready to sketch our low frequency asymptote through this point. And m was equal to 1 for this example because of the 0 at the origin. So we'll plot a line of slope 1 through the point that we just found. Now we record the poles and zeros and their frequency magnitudes. We have a pole at minus 3 and a pole at minus 36. So the magnitudes are 3 and 36. And this dictates where the slope of our line will change. It will change at 3 radians per second and at 36 radians per second. And at both spots, the change will be a decrease in slope by 1. So now we move from low frequency to high frequency, adjusting the slope according to these rules. So for the pole at minus 3, we adjust the slope at 3 radians per second. And the slope changes from plus 1 to 0. Then for the pole at minus 36, we adjust the slope by minus 1 at 36 radians per second. That completes our construction of the asymptotic plot for this example. In the interest of time, I will not sketch in what the actual curve looks like. Before moving on, let me point out that this particular transfer function is a band pass filter. That is, it rejects low frequency and high frequency. So far, all the examples we've done have had poles on the real axis. Let's now look at an example with poles on the imaginary axis. The transfer function in this example is g of s equals 18s over s squared plus 9. And you'll note this has a zero at the origin, but does not have a pole at the origin. So m is equal to plus one, just like in the previous example. We form h of s by removing the zero from the origin. So that gives h of s equal to 18 over s squared plus nine. And then we can find h sub zero. It's equal to two. So we can draw a point at one radian per second the point having a value of 2. And we can draw the low frequency asymptote through this point. The low frequency asymptote will have a slope of plus 1. And it's shown here as the dotted line. H of s has two poles, plus 3j and minus 3j, both of course on the imaginary axis. The magnitude of each of these poles is 3. So what that means is that we'll adjust the slope at 3 radians per second. We'll adjust it by minus 1 for each of these two poles. So the slope will change by minus 2. So we have our low frequency asymptote, and it has a slope of plus 1. And the curve goes up until 3 radians per second, where we adjust the slope by minus 2. So plus 1 minus 2 yields a minus one slope. After we've encountered these two poles at a frequency of three radians per second, 
we will not encounter anything else. Our transfer function h of s has no other poles and zeros. So we're done making the asymptotic plot. Now we need to sketch in what the actual curve looks like. And we'll note that because of the two poles on the imaginary axis, we'll have a very high, in fact, infinite gain at three radians per second. So here is the actual curve shown in blue and the asymptotic curve shown in red. You can see the actual curve matches the asymptotic quite well when we're not near three radians per second. But at three radians per second, there's infinite gain at this frequency. If the poles had not been on the imaginary axis, but simply very close to it, then the gain here would not be infinite, but it would still be quite high. We could evaluate how large the gain was at this frequency by calculating the magnitude of the resonance. Now let's look at our seventh example, and this one has a right half plane zero. The transfer function for this example is g of s equals 0 0.1 times s minus 36 over s squared plus 9. This transfer function has no zeros at the origin and no poles at the origin. So m is equal to 0. And then h of s will be equal to g of s. We'll find h sub 0 by evaluating h of s at s equals 0. And we'll find this value to be minus 0 0.4. So we take the absolute value of this number, 0.4, and then we plot our guide point at 1 radian per second at the value 0.4. Then, because the slope m is equal to 0, we draw our low frequency asymptote with a 0 slope through this point. The transfer function has poles at plus and minus 3j and is 0 at plus 36. For the poles at plus and minus 3j, we'll adjust the slope by minus 2, a decrease in the slope of 1 for each of the two poles. And this change in slope happens at 3 radians per second, the magnitude of the frequency of the poles, how far they are away from the origin. As a result, the slope changes from 0 to minus 2 at 3 radians per second. Moving up in frequency, we next encounter the 0 at 36, and we'll need to adjust the slope for this as well. For zeros, we increase the slope by 1 for each 0. There's a single 0 at 36, so the slope changes from minus 2 to minus 1. I want you to note that a zero in the right half plane is not really treated any differently than a zero in left half plane. We've now completed drawing the asymptotic curve, and we're ready to put in the actual frequency response, at least as best as we can sketch it. The important thing to note is that we have the two poles that are on the imaginary axis. So of course, we'll have infinite gain at 3 radians per second. Here I've sketched in blue the actual frequency response plot showing the infinite gain at 3 radians per second. Now let's look at our last example, and this one has zeros on the imaginary axis. So the transfer function of interest is g of s equals 7.2 times s squared plus 9 over s plus 36 squared. This transfer function has neither zeros nor poles at the origin, so m is equal to zero. h of s, therefore, is the same as g of s, and we can find h sub zero. It's 0 0.05. We'll plot a point at one radian per second at 0 0.05 and then we'll draw the low frequency asymptote through this point. This line has slope zero. 
we'll now find the magnitudes of the poles and zeros. So we have zeros at plus and minus 3j, and the magnitude of those is 3. For the poles, we have two of them at minus 36. So the magnitude of each of those is 36. We'll begin adjusting the slope with the two zeros at 3 radians per second. And since they're zeros, we'll adjust the slope up by 1 for each of them. So the slope will change from 0 to plus 2 at 3 radians per second. Moving up in frequency, we next encounter the two poles at minus 36 on the real axis. So at 36 radians per second, we'll adjust the slope again, and the slope will be adjusted by minus 2, a decrease of 1 for each of the poles. So our slope changes from a plus 2 slope to a 0 slope at the frequency 36. We have now completed the asymptotic frequency response plot, and we'll sketch in the actual curve, shown here in blue. And the thing you'll note is that in the actual curve, we have zero gain at a frequency of 3 radians per second. This is due to the two zeros on the imaginary axis. Any transfer function with this kind of behavior is known as a notch filter. Let's suppose you have a frequency response plot that you just sketched by hand and you want to convert it to dB. How would you go about doing this? The first step will be to write each of the gains as powers of 10. So 10 to the third is 1000, 100 becomes 10 squared, and so on. Now we'll note the exponents in these powers of 10. Then we take each one of the exponents and multiply it by 20. These values then are the magnitudes in dB. We have now examined the rules for drawing the magnitude plots of the frequency response. There are similar rules for getting approximate phase plots. I will put these rules on the Colab website so that you may look them over. However, I'm not going to hold you responsible for drawing phase plots in this class.